Okay, uh, MSB risk and red flags, money service business. A money service business, also known as an MSB, or a money or value transfer service, or what's known as a money value transfer service, I've never heard of it called that, transmits or converts currencies, such as such businesses usually provide currency exchange, money transmission, check cashing, and money order services. Typically, they are low value, high volume ooh, uh, businesses. While most MSB provide valuable money transfer services across the world, there is a risk they might be used for smurfing. This commonly used money laundering method involves the use of multiple individuals or multiple transactions for making multiple cash deposits, buying monetary instruments or bank drafts in amounts under the local reporting threshold. The individuals hired to conduct the transactions are referred to as smurfs. MSBs might also be established to be used as money laundering vehicles themselves. Okay. MSBs pose two major risks. First, a legitimate MSB could be used to launder money in small value, the high volume transactions. The other risk is that they could be uh, could be established as money laundering vehicle vehicles themselves. They will undertake legitimate businesses such as providing foreign exchange or check cashing, but the legitimate turnover will have illicit activity added to it, which is difficult to detect. Uh, MSBs are also very prevalent in terrorism financing. Uh, I think we'll probably get to that later. Hold on. For example, dealers in foreign exchange are money service businesses that provide currency exchange services. They might operate along international borders, in airports, or near communities with high populations of foreign individuals. Their turnover could be used to disguise illicit activity. It is important that you satisfy yourself that these organizations have proper controls in place and alert them to suspicious over-the-counter transactions. Providers of prepaid access arrange for access to funds or to the value of funds that have been paid in advance and can be retrieved or, or transferred at some point in the future through an electronic, electronic device or vehicle such as a card, code, electronic serial number, mobile identification number, uh, personal identification number. Uh, here it is important that you understand the customer due diligence your customer undertakes and how it monitors transactions for financial crime. So look, it's just another way of really just laundering money. So you can basically just you know layer another transaction. It's actually a fantastic way to layer a transaction. Uh, that's why you know all these sort of money service businesses are um, you know such as Western Union, you know MoneyGram, etc. And MoneyGram actually got fined badly once. Uh, you know they have to conduct customer due diligence now. However, not all MSBs are immediately obviously. For example, the United States Postal Service sells its own money orders and therefore is deemed an MSB. Uh, there will definitely be a question on the US Postal Service and its MSB status when you do the CKRCA. Some jurisdictions have requirements for MSBs to register. In these instances, it would be possible to check registration details. Correspondent banking risks and red flags. If you work in a major center, like I said before, uh, correspondent banking is, is, is it's big business, you know? Especially working in New York, a lot of AML jobs in New York relate to correspondent banking, payable through accounts, nesting, etc. Um, correspondent banking is when one bank acts as the agent as another bank in a foreign country. A local or respondent bank has customers who want banking services in a foreign country, so it contracts with a foreign correspondent bank to provide those. By establishing multiple correspondent relationships, a local bank can undertake international financial transactions for themselves and their, for their customers in jurisdictions where they have no physical presence. So that's how these, these, these banks, you know, basically have, you know, you think like, oh, I can just, you know, use my card and it's fine. Like, yeah, you can work out, that you can do that because they have correspondent relationships. The indirect nature of correspondent banking relationships means that the correspondent bank provides services for individuals or entities for which it is neither verified the identities nor obtain any first-hand knowledge. The amount of money that flows through the correspondent accounts can pose a significant threat because the correspondent is processing large volumes of transactions for the respondent's customers. Correspondent banking is vulnerable to financial crime, especially because correspondent banks do not know the customer of the respondent directly and rely on internal controls of the respondent. In addition, less information is available to help the correspondent recognize this business activity. So basically, like you're relying on, on you know, their CDD, and then there could be you know have another correspondent relationship. So you're gonna just have a correspondent connection relationship connected to another correspondent relationship. So you can really just keep going on. Large international banks often act as correspondents for thousands of other banks. Before establishing correspondent accounts, a bank should be able to answer basic questions including who the respondent bank's owners are and the nature of its regulatory oversight. Lower risk respondent banks might be offered a broad range of services such as cash management, for example, interest bearing accounts in a variety of currencies, international funds, transfers, check clearing, payable through accounts and foreign exchange. 
higher risk respondent banks might be restricted from non-credit cash management services. Like that's not important, but uh, that's what they've said. But correspondent banking, this will be a question, so there'll be information here. Correspondent banking is higher risk because the correspondent does not or cannot conduct typical due diligence, due diligence to know the customer of the respondent, know your customer's customer. The correspondent does not have data on respondent transactions that typically enable transaction monitoring controls to support unusual patterns. The correspondent could identify the respondent's regulators, but not, also the, not always the degree of supervision to which the respondent is subject. I think that basically means, like, you know, let's have a look at, like, you know, let's look at Vanuatu. You know, they probably technically have a regulator, but, you know, <laughs> did they actually do anything? Um, the correspondent might have limited information on the respondent's anti-financial crime controls, perhaps through a questionnaire, yet still relies on the respondent to have a new sufficient effective controls on its customers. Um, usually there's a Wolfsburg questionnaire with the banks that you can fill out, and that um, is used a lot in correspondent banking. Some respondents are themselves correspondents to third banks, a practice called nesting. Nested accounts further shield correspondent banks from seeing the parties involved. Designated non-financial businesses and professions linked risk and red flags. Uh, designated non-financial businesses and professions, or DNFBPs, are attractive channels for money laundering, financial crime, and terrorism financing operations. Professional service providers could collude with criminals to disguise financial crime. They include such industries as attorneys, notaries, and other independent legal professionals, accountants, auditors, and tax advisors. Other types of DNFBPs may take cash for purchase or could, and could launder funds easily given the nature of their businesses. Examples include dealers in real estate, jewels and precious metals and vehicles. It is very important that you know the type of business your customer undertakes so it can conduct due to appropriate research. Cool. The Financial Action Task Force recommends that DNFBVs are regulated in the same way as a credit and financial institutions. Unfortunately, they are not though. Uh, which each sector having specific regulations tailored to the risk exposure of to of the nature and business of the industry. These recommendations are now contemplated in the anti-money laundering regulations in various jurisdictions, such as the money laundering directives applicable in the European Union. However, some countries, including the US, do not require most DNFBPs to have anti-financial crime program. Uh, lack of jurisdictional requirements can affect the risk exposure that DNFBPs Pose your organization. So this is a big topic because your real estate is not agents are not really included in this. And real estate agents is one of the biggest money laundering sort of industries out there. But people, the, the governments are like kind of like mm, we don't want to do that yet. You know what I mean? So you should be aware of what type of customer should be considered DNFBPs. If applicable under local jurisdiction, you must verify that DNFBP has appropriate anti-financial crime policies in place, as with financial institutions or in general, they must conduct all of their activities expected to prevent financial crime. You must endeavor to assess their policies and satisfy yourself as they are applied. Be aware that the activities your customer undertakes, for example, does that real estate agent deal with a small family homes or high value properties? What type of jeweler is your customer? Is he selling engagement and wedding rings and watches from a shop in the mall? Or is he dealing with high value bespoke and collectible watches from his own home? Collecting this information will enable you to apply an appropriate risk screening to your customer. Third party payment processor risk and red flags. Third party risks are generated by third party payment processors, TPPP. They're not called that. These are generally bank customers that provide payment processing services to merchants and other business entities. So payments is definitely going to be a big industry with KYC now, especially with Bitcoin. They often, oh sorry, crypto. they often use their commercial bank accounts to conduct payment processing for their merchant clients. Depending on their jurisdiction, they might not be subject to anti, any anti-financial crime requirements. Um, with the expansion of the internet, these customers might now service a variety of domestic and international merchants, including conventional retail uh, inter and internet-based establishments, as well as prepaid travel and internet gaming enterprises. Due to the customer base and third-party payment process service, they are vulnerable to be used for financial crime. Examples of risk posed by a third-party payment processor include the following. A third-party payment processor will probably maintain relationships at multiple institutions, which hinders a financial institution's ability to see the entire customer relationship. This type of customer might do this deliberately in order to engage in suspicious activity. This type of customer can be used by criminals to mask transactions and launder the proceeds of crime. This is done by sending funds directly to a financial institution from a foreign jurisdiction using automated clearinghouse. Given the large number of transactions conducted through the TPPP, this activity might not be identified. 
one red flag that TPPs who are engaged in suspicious activity or are being used by criminals to do so might have higher than average rates of disputed payments because of unauthorized transactions. Credit card transactions passing through uh, a third party payment processor do not have to have, they have significant to be considered suspicious or unusual. For example, there might be a large number of small domestic or international transactions, repeat customers and or donors with no discernible pattern or which may not match the expected activity of the third party payment processor when the account was established. 